Hello, squirrel buddies and squirrel dog hunting buddies and friends and foes alike. <laughs> uh, I've been doing these uh, squirrel hunting videos and uh, uh, I got a question from one guy that he uh, he said, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, I guess I hadn't really introduced myself on these videos and they're really low quality and just me out videoing myself with uh training these squirrel dogs and the procedures and stuff i do just trying to document it and and uh you know just in case people want to know how i do it or if i need to show somebody else something i got a video i can send you um my name is uh uh chad funk i'm from um i live in pendleton south carolina right near clemson university uh, been, I was born and raised here, uh, uh, I, um, I've been messing with squirrel dogs probably 15, 20 years, but, uh, when I first started out, I was just, uh, a pleasure hunter with, uh, I'd had, a uh, feist for, you know, 10, 15 years before I ever got into mountain, original mountain curs and, uh, competition hunting, so, uh, you know, for many years, I was just playing with uh, uh, feist dogs and meat hunting and stuff like that. Uh, and um, when you talk about training or how you train, there's, there, everybody's got an opinion and uh, people will argue with you. And uh, I, I had a friend tell me one time, if uh, you ever get lost in the woods... And you need help, all you gotta do is start talking about training squirrel dogs and somebody show up to argue with you. <laughs> and then you'll be rescued. So um you know, training squirrel dogs, especially on the competition side, is is pretty controversial and it's kinda like politics. You don't you don't want to talk about religion or politics and sometimes talking about training squirrel dogs is is kind of the same avenue um so you just have to uh you know you have those guys who think that you know you just buy a squirrel dog with certain genes and it's like opening a a can of a squirrel dog you know you just feed it and raise it up and take it to woods and it trees squirrels or and then you have the guys like like me. I believe there's a little bit more training in the involved in it, and um, and and pointing the dog in the right direction. Uh, there's a little bit of both. I mean, uh, I see both sides of it, but I, I don't think either side is completely right or wrong. Um, I, if they was a totally perfect genetic dog that just you just took to the woods and you could win competition hunts with everybody would have that particular kind of dog and that just just don't happen you know uh, and i hate to you know a lot of these guys spend years breeding and training these dogs or and they like to think of themselves as creating a genetic superior dog and i mean to each his own you know um uh i make these videos basically uh, I, I've started this uh, channel just to try to document the procedures and stuff I do from starting a dog from a puppy to finishing him at three years old. Uh, the different things I run into and I try to document it uh, with these little short films. Uh, most of the time it's just me with my cell phone in the woods trying to document what I'm doing to fix a problem or to to point a dog in the right direction to to get him to do what he needs to do and uh a lot of my stuff i'm 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 i like the competition hunt i do meat hunt and uh they're basically two kind of different dogs um if i'm just training a dog to be a uh meat dog i don't i don't concentrate as much on how tight the dog is on the tree um uh and uh, you know you're just trying to kill a squirrel you just need the dog to go and locate the squirrel for you and 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 get you close to it close enough to kill it you know in a competition hunt it's more about how 
the style the dog has on the tree. Uh, you know, you can't have a dog that's loose. Uh, um, the most competition hunts let you get about between 15 to 30 steps before the dog, if the dog comes off the tree, the dog will be minus. Uh, that, with a meat dog, that isn't that big a problem. But if you're training a competition dog, you've got to have a dog that you can uh, tighten up on tree. And a lot of the training stuff I do has to do with tighten dog, tightening a dog up on a tree. And, you know, um, again, you'll have arguments about that, <laughs> you know, how genetic it is or, uh, in my opinion, uh, how the genetic part of a dog being tied on the tree, uh, the genetic part is the dog hunting and finding and locating game. That's the genetic part. How loud the dog is, how fast the dog runs, how quick he is at locating them. That's genetic. Um, but, uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, if you just take a dog to the woods and let it get treed, let it do what it wants to do, most dogs are going to be loose. You know, uh, they're not really, I don't know if that's, the genetic part is hunting and finding and locating game. How a dog acts on the tree after it's hunted and found and located game is what you let it do or how you teach the dog to behave after it's located the game. Um, that's just my opinion and my people get mad and spit fire if they hear me say that and they'll argue with me. Uh, but in my opinion, you know, the, that's, there's a genetic part and there's a talk part and the genetic part is a, the game drive, the dog locating game and how it acts after it locates the game. Well, the, um, the train part is how the dog acts after it's located the game. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's a touchy subject. Um, I believe, and, and this stuff I'm telling you, it isn't absolute law. Uh, this is my opinion. Uh, if you don't like my opinion, I'm, I'm good with it. We'll, we'll have to still be friends, I hope. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, a lot of times, you know, I have people argue with me on Facebook and some people just get plumb crazy. And a lot of times I just kind of block them that way. I ain't got to argue or have somebody come on every time I could put, post something on Facebook or something, they'll come on there and start criticizing and tell them everybody how wrong I am. And I just usually block them because it ain't worth arguing about and everybody's got their ideas about things uh let me see my timeline for a dog a lot of times is i don't like for a dog to start too early you know a lot of people like for a dog to be treating its own game at four five six months old i mean I, i'm good with them if they starting to bump them about that age but I've noticed that a lot of dogs that start out real fast, you know, four months old, you can win a competition hunt with them at four months old. These dogs seem to regress. Uh, I've had that happen with feist dogs. I've had it happen with curs. I've had it happen with a with some uh, mountain cur mountain mountain curs, which are hound and cur crosses. Uh, a lot of times. I, I don't really like for a dog to start real real fast because I want them to kind of be bumping trees by the time they're a year old. And uh, um, I've noticed if you start a dog too fast and put too much pressure on them, sometimes they regress and they lose interest. And I've had dogs that, you know, four or five months old, you can win a competition hunt with, but then a year old, it wouldn't tree nothing. And, and just you burnt the dog out or, um, I don't know why they do that, but they do. And so most of the time somebody tells me I got a fast starter. It's treating its own, it's treating like a five-year-old at three months. I'm like, okay, yeah, wait for about a year and see what happens. But, uh, 
a lot of times these people push these dogs too fast and um, it burns them out and then you end up having to restart the dog and then it also it quits on you and stuff like that and most dogs it takes three good kill seasons to finish a dog out where it don't regress any i've had them um most dogs kind of go in and out from for the first three kill seasons which you know basically three years old after they get about three years old and had three good kill seasons usually they settle down and you can you can basically set them up a while and then get them right back out and hunt you know but a uh, young uh young dogs under under three years old usually go in and out so you need to try to keep them in the woods on a regular basis you know once a couple times a week you know during the off season and during the kill during the kill season i try to take them every day i'm off you know and get them in the woods but uh uh, usually, t uh, all what I've seen, it usually takes about three good kill seasons to get a dog settled and finished out. What they would classify as finished out. Uh, and there's different classifications of finished dogs. You know, you got dogs that, um, you know, most of my dogs, I can tree squirrels with them within, you know, by the time they're a year old and kill squirrels good enough for a meat dog. And you can finish them what you would consider a meat dog within a year but if you want a dog that's uh this pretty settled in competition dog ready it, it takes about three years to to work all the quirks out i mean i've had them where i considered them as competition ready and took them to competition and then a lot of dogs uh their first few competition hunts they 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 uh, are not used to the other dogs and the other people. And you'll pull out some quirks that you didn't know you have that only happens when you go to a competition hunt, you know. And then you, I would go home and spend that year or two getting working working on those particular qu quirks. And it sometimes it takes a dog uh, time to mature and settle in as a competition dog. And sometimes the only way you can do it is going to hunts or inviting your buddies over and y'all taking out and pretending or going through the same steps you would in a competition hunt. But, uh, um, there's, like I said, it's, um, well, I lose my train of thought, but, uh, uh, and another thing with the competition hunts, if you want a competition hunt, uh, first thing you want to do is, you know, learn the rules to the hunt. You know, you, you got to study up and, and a lot of competition places will let you go and, and go out on cast with people and, and kind of learn the rules. And But you want to know the rules and uh, because that makes you a good handler. And, and being a handler in a competition hunt is, is a category in its own. You know, it's, um, you know, you want to be smart. You know, if you get ahead in the cast or you're a couple of squirrels ahead, you, you might not want to treat that dog in unless you have to. Or um, because you don't want to take a chance and get your dog minus after you're ahead, and, and just different techniques like that. That's uh, but uh, handling is 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 his own category. I mean, there's really good uh, guys that are real good at handling, and they do it professionally. Uh, I have people argue with me about training dogs, but uh, sometimes these people never really train the dog themselves. They you know a lot of you have a lot of money men and a lot of professional handlers so a lot of these guys is never uh, uh a money man bought them a four-year-old dog that's been already winning competition hunts and they've been hunting it and they got a big name you know um but that's um like i said uh handling's his own category uh like i said i don't know everything i, I have i've I've been in several hunt competition hunts. I'm, I've been beat a whole lot. And, you know, it's kind of like uh, uh, you try to figure out every way there is to lose until you run out and then you start winning, you know. <laughs> That's my my uh, uh, strategy, you know. So, <laughs> But um, I don't know everybody. And all these people, like I said, all these people will disagree and people call people names and, argue but it isn't really worth all that and 
I mean, I'm going to tell you what I think and how I do it. And it's not absolute. I'm not the guru <laughs> or know it all, you know, because I don't. There's things I don't know and things I'd like to learn from other people, too. Um, you know, and you got the, the idea about genetics on a dog. If uh, I've never seen a dog that you could come from any cross that you could sit in a kennel for three years and then just get it out and go to the woods and it's going to be like a a one class competition dog that just don't happen you know now there are things that's genetic like the voice of a dog you know in your competition you want to be able to hear your dog at three or four hundred yards and if there's two or three other dogs there the, your dog's louder than they are you're going to be able to treat your dog in first uh there's different there's um good things about having a loud dog being able to hear him at a distance you know uh having a dog that goes out goes deep uh some people like them close hunt a little closer i like a dog to go to the near squirrel <laughs> you know <laughs> that's just my guideline um you know you got and, and and a lot of people like call the way i train dogs they'll say oh it's a man-made dog you know and i'm like you know you know and then people you know they'll They'll put other people down and try to, I don't know, it's it's, it's kind of needy pity, but uh, they'll call, like, some of the stuff I do, oh, it's a man-made dog, man-made tree dog, you know, but it trees, and, you know, it's, um, and I guess if you don't like that, if you want a natural tree dog, but I don't, if you don't train the dog a little bit, you ain't never going to find a perfect genetic dog for competition hunting like i said there's no there's no cross that i've ever heard of that you could put in a kennel and leave it there for three years and get it out and go kill squirrels it just don't happen and there's people who think that's the case <laughs> but um um uh, like i said uh most most curs and feist and stuff's gonna have some sort of uh quirk you know, where, you know, like a, that would mess you up, kind of like a dog not being tied on a tree, you know, get you minus on every tree in a competition hunt. Um, I've had dogs that were a little bit ill or timid, didn't like the other dogs, and uh, that could get you in trouble in a competition hunt. And, you know, most times if they're a little ill or something, you want you might just want to make them a, a meat pleasure dog. Um, you know, there's... Uh, I mean, there's just so many opinions and, you know, and you got a lot of times if, if I'm talking to somebody and they say, oh, this dog just, it just did it on its own. You know, I just, I put it in a kennel, got it out two years later and went to killing squirrels and it didn't move. It was toe nailed. You know, I just, I kind of write them off because I don't really think that happens <laughs> and I don't call them a liar, but you know, to their face, <laughs> you know? but, uh, I just, uh, I just don't see it happening. And, uh, and me saying this right here is probably going to make some, some of these guys mad, you know, cause they, I think they watch my, my YouTube videos and, you know, giggle behind the scenes, you know, which is fine. <laughs> like I said, it's, it's, this is for entertainment purposes and enjoyment. So, you know, cutting up and with your buddies and stuff. And that's the main reason I do this. And I, I'm trying to do these videos so I can document the stages that I go through when I'm finished starting training and finishing a dog so I can refer back to them at, at later on and, and kind of twerk things and make the process a whole lot easier. But um, um, thanks for listening. Uh, uh, leave any comments you have in the below. And like I said, uh, I, I got some videos. I've got like over a thousand views, but I got like five likes, you know. So I'd appreciate it if you would, you would like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel, you know. Uh, like the YouTube uh, gurus out there. So, But uh, like I said, my name's Chad Funk, and I'm, gl I'm glad you're watching my videos, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.